okay, time elapsed from the uh, from the end of bypass without reaching 30 degrees. So we check, uh, we say, okay, we try 900 seconds to see how it will develop. If it's going down, we go back. If it's going up, we start the frost. If these two condition is there, we start uh, the defrost cycle. For a better explanation, I prepare a chart. You can say, yes, but low pressure is not constant. When we start up the unit, we have a pressure development which is different. Yes, it's true. But I show you now a, a chart here, very interesting, okay. This is a typical behavior of the low pressure when we run the unit. What we do is that uh, when we run the unit, we have uh, we wait 660 seconds and then we check the pressure. Then we say, okay, we fix this as a set. We say this is the pressure uh, the value of the pressure. Then we check uh, the development. If we see the pressure that is dropping down of more than 0 0.4 bar, means we need, means we are taking ice on the coil. Mm -hmm. And so we need to defrost. And this is the frost point. So if it's not, if it didn't drop for more than 0 0.4 bars, we keep it going. And then after 660 seconds, we set another set, we check, and if it's drop 0 0.4 bar, we do the defrost or not. So in this case, we always know how much ice we have stuck on the coil. And I can come back to the point I was saying before. So, if the set of the pressure minus the delta P is more than 0 0.4 bar, we do the defrost of the coil. So in this case, we can never collect water on the coil. And we do the defrost when it's really necessary. So it's really based on the pressure only, pressure differential on the coil. Pressure differential, also temperature, because uh, we can have, uh, uh, actually, if we have more than 10 degrees outside, we don't need to defrost. Or when the coil, te when we have more than 10 degrees, we don't do the defrost. If we have less than 10 degrees, but it's dry, the temperature of the coil stay above minus 2. So we don't collect water, we don't collect uh, uh, ice on the coil. Okay. So, so if these two conditions is there, means we have so the opportunity pressure. to collect ice. In this case, we say, okay, if these two conditions is there, we have a potential opportunity to get that. And so we start to check the pressure in a dynamic way, not from the beginning to the end. We, every 660 seconds, we, go we check. Another cycle. We, we set the pressure and we check what happens if we have a drop. If not, uh, we check again. It's a dynamic control of the system. So pressure and temperature have to be exactly, right. together. Not either one. Either one. Either one or both. Both together. They have to be both. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And one of the biggest complaints with our big competitor is that they have defrost problems. The um, oh, West and out East, multi-stack has all kinds of defrost pro uh, pro uh, problems, so the engineers are loving this. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, if it depends only on the pressure, then you might have a problem too, but if you leave some the or whatever. Exactly, yeah. could be other reason. Right, so but uh, both, if, you But uh, if you have a, let me say, dirty coin. Yeah. Uh, could be so you fix the pressure, but uh, the way we check being dynamic, we don't measure a value of pressure. Could be whatever, actually, if we have a dirty coil, we have a, 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 a higher 
pressure, we increase the pressure, and so, but we don't check the real value of the coil. We check just uh, how much we drop if the temperature condition is what we measure. And then we check also if uh, we ended the cycle before. We ended the cycle and we didn't recover the pressure. We started the next uh, frosting. Actually, first, if we have a hot gas injection, we have a drop in pressure, we say, okay, let's put the hot gas. During the hot gas injection, we check the pressure. If we are able to recover the 0.4 bar, means that the hot gas was just enough uh, to clean the coil from the first uh, frozen. But if we end the cycle and we didn't recover the 0.4 bar within the maximum time, which is three minutes of hot gas injection, we do, we invert the cycle and we are sure to clean completely the coil from the eye. So you almost have two stages of the Exactly. First do your hot, hot gas. Yes. If that doesn't satisfy, you'll then go into reverse cycle. Yeah. Maximum of three minutes. Yes. On the half gas. Then yes. you go to the heating cycle. And then we invert How long? The as long as it takes? No, usually we when we invert the cycle is five minutes. Is that time is it always time terminated or is the pressure terminated? Uh, when we invert the cycle is time terminated because okay, so it's uh, a fixed time of five minutes. Uh, exactly. But uh, we, when we come back, we wait 600 seconds on uh, the unit are starting to heating, and then we start again the check. And if we have a pressure drop uh, very quick, we start again. So it means we don't have a fixed time to the frost. If it's a very bad condition, the worst condition is, say, when you have a very humid ambient 5 degree, so you have the coil minus 3, minus 4 degree, so all the humidity is stuck because you don't have, you have a quite a lot of humidity in the air, it's stuck on the coil. In this case, we can defrost even every, I don't know, 20 minutes to clean it up. Because if you don't do like this, you accumulate so much ice on the bottom part of the coil that you can never get it off. It's very, very difficult. So when you're doing a hot, jack, hot gas injection, you don't go out of the heating mode. So you continue no, to have heat. We have a vibe, we just inject it, yep. and we continue to work. But uh, in this case, if we inject, and a we see inject? the pressure. In this case, we continue to check the pressure right. to see if we are able to go enough. If the pressure is going up, okay, we say one shot of hot gas is enough, okay. But if we terminate the hot gas didn't succeed to recover the right. pressure, and we terminate for three times by maximum time, we invert the cycle next time. We don't go for hot gas again. But that's not on the NRLs, right? Not in the NRL. A &K, it is A &K. A &K. There's no hot gas on the NRL. Yeah. It depends from the product because uh, on the NRL is a large uh, unit. We prefer we, we go for uh, to invert the cycle and look the pressure. It's more, let me say, hot gas, uh, to be honest, uh, we use it, and it's good in very few days in a year. Because it uh, means uh, you don't have a lot of water in the air. Uh, I mean, humidity is not very high. You have uh, just a freezing temperature on the coil, and you have just a small breeze. How can we say breeze? Okay. Uh, on the surface. In this case, you are able to clean with the hot gas. But otherwise, 
I mean, when you have a five, six degree ambient and you are, you are going like we have seen in K with 140 degree water. It's very cold coil. Uh, yes, very cold coil and you stack all the humidity. You accumulate very, very big amount of ice. But our dew points are very, very low at that, yeah. at that temperature. So, we, you know, the amount of moisture available goes down also. <laughs> Sorry. So no, we I, we it took uh, several years to define uh, uh, this method, but uh, this is the most reliable, and this is the one that is giving being dynamic. We don't affect uh, the COP because, to be honest. If you would like to be efficient, I mean efficient, if you would like to be safe, most of our competitors in Europe, what they do is that they fix a time under a certain temperature of the coil, they defrost, mm -hmm. even if they don't need. But this means a lot of waste of energy. Because when you have a defrost cycle, you waste... Uh,